As the Hebrew Bible closes, the people reveal their heart problem once again. Yet hope remains from an old prophecy of the great shepherd Moses. On The Bible Brief. Don't forget to recommend the podcast to your friends. We're starting the New Testament on Monday, October 30th, as we explore the great culmination of the Bible story. The people have a heart problem. They have hearts that refuse to understand God's law and to obey it through faith. They continue to rebel, and they continue to disobey their Savior and their rescuer from bondage. They simply won't return to God in faith, even if he has returned this remnant to the land of Canaan. The leaders gave their best shot to help reform this stiff-necked people. They mourned the sin of the people. They read the law before them. They led the remnant to renew their covenant commitment to following God. They even led the people to put away their foreign wives, prohibited by God to take in marriage. The faith and efforts of Nehemiah and the other leaders were genuine. They truly wanted to reform this people into a new, prosperous kingdom like it had been before. To show God that they perhaps could be worthy to live in the land promised to their fathers. But their efforts ultimately bore little fruit. Nehemiah had to return from Jerusalem to Persia for just a brief period of time, and upon arriving back in Jerusalem, he discovered the heart problem that remained among the people. Despite all the efforts of prior years, they had again begun marrying people of the land, profaning the Sabbath day of rest, and ignoring their duties to provide for the Levitical priests. You can imagine the devastation that Nehemiah felt when he saw this an aggressive sort of sadness, and perhaps a realization of something severe. These people aren't going to turn back. Even with godly leadership, their sickness remains. The people have a heart problem. Over a thousand years earlier, Moses saw the heart problem of the people. After being called by God from his shepherding of sheep, He was shepherding a nation of stiff-necked, rebellious Israelites. God had used him to split the Red Sea, to lead the nation through the wilderness, to deliver the law to the people at Mount Sinai. And yet through all these miracles in the wilderness, and God's patience with them in the golden calf incident, the people still refused to enter the land because of the bad reports of 10 out of 12 spies. They assumed that the God who had delivered them from Egyptian slavery fed them in the wilderness and brought them to Canaan, wouldn't also defeat their enemies before them. And in this they disobeyed, demonstrating a truth of the people. The people have a heart problem. After the death of Moses, one of the faithful spies, Joshua, led the people to conquer much of the land of Canaan and to enjoy the amazing victories that God gave them over their enemies. He led their march around Jericho, their ambush of Ai, and to victory in the northern and southern campaigns through Canaan. Yet after Joshua's generation died out, the people stopped attempting to conquer the land. They stopped obeying the law, and they stopped loving God. The era of the judges only served to underline the rebellion and corruption of the Israelites in the land. They hired private priests, set up private pantheons, and whored after all the gods of the people of the land. And in all this, they continued to underline their big issue. The people have a heart problem. Soon this rebellion reached a new pitch as the people demanded that God give them a king to be like the other nations around them. They wanted a king who would go before them in battle and give them victory over their enemies. They wanted a replacement for their invisible God in favor of a visible king. And through the prophet Samuel, God granted their request and gave them the king that they wanted. Saul, a man who couldn't keep track of a few donkeys, would be the new shepherd of the nation. And though he was a man who began well, Saul became an unfaithful, unrighteous, paranoid king who in the end took his own life after a lost battle with the Philistines. The heart problem of the people was reflected in the heart of their chosen king. 
God's heart, however, would be on display in the next king. David, the man after God's own heart, rose to the throne of Israel, and he was perhaps the brightest spot in the history of the nation since it came up out of Egypt. He was faithful to God's law, faithful as the king of the people, compassionate to the poor, and he embodied the commands Moses delivered in his final speech to the people. David loved God, followed the law, and took the land. And while David did have some severe downfalls, he yet faithfully trusted in God to forgive him of his sin and to cleanse him from his unrighteousness. David wasn't perfect, but he displayed something of the heart that the nation should have had, but never had for itself. Upon the death of David, his son Solomon rose to the throne, and though he had considerable assets at his disposal, especially the asset of an exemplary king in his father, he yet fell because of his own heart. Despite having the gift of wisdom from God, he yet disobeyed all the major commands given by God to the kings. He expanded his cavalry, he had many wives, he enriched himself with much silver and gold, and he disobeyed God's law that he was to write and meditate upon. The shepherd of Israel in its most prosperous golden age fell into worshiping other gods after marrying foreign wives. And just as the heart of this shepherd was, the people were there with him. The people have a heart problem. Soon the kingdom split between north and south, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. And though the nation split, it would still illustrate the same internal problem on the outside. In the northern kingdom of Israel, the king set up two golden calves. He set up a new priesthood and he set up a new unauthorized feast. This set the tone for the northern kingdom for the remainder of its existence. Through many dynasties, assassinations, and power plays, the kingdom got worse and worse, forsaking nearly all semblance of worshiping the God of their fathers. And in 722 BC, they were conquered by the Assyrian Empire and scattered among all its provinces. The southern kingdom of Judah didn't fare much better. Though they had a few righteous kings, especially in Hezekiah and Josiah, they were on the same trend as the north. They were leaning toward destruction. Ultimately, the shepherds of Judah proved unrighteous, rebellious, and unfaithful to the Sinai covenant given through Moses. And despite being warned by prophet after prophet, they were finally condemned to exile as well. God had sent his whole nation, both north and south, away from the land and brought upon them the curses of the Sinai covenant. Curses realized in their lives because of their main issue. The people have a heart problem. Yet despite all this, despite all the unfaithfulness of the people, God yet brought back a portion, a remnant of them into the land of Canaan. It was a small bunch, only a few hundred thousand at most, and yet they formed the center of where God was continuing to work, an example of what God could do for all his people scattered throughout all the nations. If he could bring this small remnant back through the workings in the hearts of pagan kings, he had the power to bring them all back. But here was Nehemiah, seeing the hearts of the returned exiles, seeing that the problem, even after experiencing those curses, was still as present as it ever was. The people have a heart problem, a problem that has existed for a thousand years. Perhaps in that moment, however, he remembered some of the last words of Moses. Words of hope for the entire nation. Words that could be clung to for generations to come, for millennia to come. Words spoken to the exiled Israelites among all the nations of the earth words of a future when their heart problem would finally be solved. These were the words. And when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, and return to the Lord your God, you and your children, and obey His voice in all that I command you today, with all your heart and with all your soul, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have mercy on you, and he will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. 
if your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven. From there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will take you. And the Lord your God will bring you into the land that your fathers possessed, that you may possess it. And he will make you more prosperous and numerous than your fathers. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. By God's power, the prophet Moses foresaw these events a thousand years before Nehemiah's day. He understood that the nation wouldn't last in the land of Canaan. He knew that they would ask for kings to be like other nations, and he knew that they would eventually disobey and pile up the judgment of God until that devastation of cursing away from the land came upon them. Moses knew, yet he expressed this great hope from the Lord. They wouldn't stay that way. Someday, at some point, not merely a remnant, but all the exiles would be brought forth from the nation. Someday, they would come back to possess the land of Canaan in prosperity. Someday, they would finally be rid of their problem, the problem that had so plagued the nation from that very first generation out of Egypt. Someday, God would circumcise their hearts. He would take away their rebellion, and he would facilitate wholehearted love and devotion for him. But that someday would require a someone, a someone that Moses himself referred to in the same speech, a prophet like him, a prophet like Moses, whom God would give his very words, a shepherd for the people like Moses, but with more authority, more purity, authorized to speak in God's name. A good shepherd like David, who would fight the lions and the bears for his sheep. A shepherd who will lead God's people in their new exodus. The prophet is coming. This shepherd is coming. And a new era is coming with him. Join us next time as expectation builds around the coming Messiah. A man who will be unlike any other, the servant of the Lord and the King of all. The Bible Brief is brought to you by the Bible Literacy Foundation, dedicated to helping people like you learn the Bible. Copyright Bible Literacy Foundation 2023